In this video, we're going to learn how to build the tool interface with a gripper attachment. This should be done after you have a completed dexter. To begin, get some epoxy prepared. Take your 28mm strake and get some epoxy on it. Then, put it into your span mount. It may not fit easily, so a mallet may be needed. It should be flush with the inner surface on the bottom of the span mount. Once it's in place, wipe any excess epoxy. Before the epoxy dries, epoxy 3M3 nuts into each of the outer holes at the bottom of the tool interface body. Put a layer of epoxy in the hole before putting the nut in. Once the nut is in, push it down until it is fully seated. A tool to push it down may help. After this, thread a placeholder bolt through the nut and put another layer of epoxy on top. Let dry. Next, we're going to press the bearings into the 3D printed parts. Press fit two 6703 bearings into the roll body on either side. After this, press two MR128 bearings into either side of the static finger. These may be hard to get in, and a tool such as a press or a mallet will help. Once the bearings have been set, take your dynamic finger and press it into the bearings of the fixed finger. It should be flush with the top of the fixed finger. Then, take your finger cap and start to tighten an M2 by 16 millimeter bolt with an M2 washer into the top. Thread it until the end of the bolt is just barely sticking out of the bottom. Then, take the part that is sticking out and thread that into the top of the dynamic finger. Tighten the bolt down all the way and then the gripper portion of the tool interface is done. This same technique can be used to make your own attachments. Next, we will prepare the roll driver. Start by taking a sewing pin and cutting off the head of it. We will be using this with a drill to ream the holes for the other pins in the roll driver. The nubs on top of the roll driver have holes where they should fit perfectly, but they may need to be reamed. Once the holes have been reamed, take another sewing pin and push into the hole from the nub until it starts to come out of the other side. Then, cut the head off, put a small amount of super glue on the pin, and push it in to make it flush. If there is significant resistance, using the drill with the reaming pin and no glue will be fine. After this, cut as much of the bottom of the pin off as possible. When all the pins are in the roll driver, sand the points off until it is flush. After the pins have been sanded down, thread 4 M2 by 20 mm bolts into the roll driver nub side first. Thread them until they are flush with the bottom. Next, press the roll driver into the roll body. The flat side of the roll driver goes into the side of the roll body that is not flat. There may be resistance, so a press or a mallet may be useful. It should look like this when pressed in. Once the roll body is put together, take both of your Dynamixel servos. Each should be labeled with the ID number of the servo, which should be 1 and 3. Then, take the connector out of the motor labeled 1 and plug it into the motor labeled 3. Then, take each connector and press it against the groove at the top edge of the motor. While holding the wires in place, slide the bottom of the servo motor into the tool interface body. It will click into place once it is seated. After the first servo has been seated, take a 6x connector and cut it in half to make a 3x connector. Then, pick one of the connectors on the motor to turn into a connector that is compatible with Dexter. Looking at the connector this way, each wire is as follows. Top is ground, middle is power, and bottom is data. When you connect these to Dexter, these will correspond to black, red, and blue. Cut these wires in the middle. Do this process one at a time as they are not labeled. Start with the ground wire. After you cut it, strip it using the 20 gauge hole on your wire strippers. Then, solder it to one of the edges of the 3x connector. Mark this end of the connector with black permanent marker so that you can always know where ground is supposed to go. Once you've marked it, continue on with the other two wires. You can optionally mark the sections with red and blue to have an easy color key. When your connector is finished, take the end effector wires from your Dexter and plug them into the connector following the color key. After you power it on, make sure to allow the gripper to move with Dexter for its startup dance if you don't mount it. Take the center screw out of the motor while you can before it's set to zero. When your Dexter is powered up, open DDE. Once you're in DDE, move your cursor over where it says jobs and then move to the sub menu that says run instruction. Click on the option that says show dialog and a window will pop up. Select the Dexter you're using from the drop down menu. Then, go over to where it says set parameter. Select the option that says EE roll and make sure the value says zero. Click the set parameter button and the motor should move if it is not already at zero. If you're using a newer version of DDE, you can also use the J6 field under move all joints for the same purpose. Once the motor has been zeroed, take four 25 centimeter lengths of 28 gauge wire in black, red, blue, and green. Feed those through the center hole of the roll driver and then press them into the groove of the span mount. Line up the bolts on the roll driver with the holes on the span mount and tighten them down while keeping the wires in the groove. Tighten them until they are slightly sticking out of the holes in the span mount. Then, take an M2 washer and an M2 nut and tighten it over the bolt using something like a flathead screwdriver to spin the nut. A conventional wrench will not fit in these holes. Once it is threaded, tighten the bolt all the way and then tighten the nut after. Repeat this for each bolt. Once the span mount and roll body have been connected, feed the roll body's end of the wires into the hole of the center of the motor without turning the motor. Pull the wires through until the roll driver is just about to connect with the motor. 
Then, match up the nubs with the roll driver in a way that's as close to zero as possible. The zero position should be to where the nubs on the span mount are on top and slightly skewed counterclockwise when looking at it from the front. Put some epoxy around the rim of the roll body and then push the roll driver into the motor. Give the span mount a few slight turns back and forth to ensure you've linked the roll driver. Then wipe the excess epoxy around the edges with a paper towel. Then, take two M2 by 20 mm bolts and thread them into the end holes on the roll body. Tighten an M2 nut with a washer at the end. The center hole cannot fit a nut at the end, so we leave that one empty. Next, take your span motor, the one labeled with the number one, and take the center screw out as you did with the roll motor. Then, take the plastic driver off the motor. Once that is off, match up the motor's driver with the hole on the span mount. Push the motor into the two nubs at the bottom of the span mount and this will hold it in place. Similar to the roll body, fasten two M2 by 20 millimeter bolts into the holes on the right of the span mount. After this, we need to connect the two motors together. Take your other connector in the roll motor and solder it in the same color key as you did for the first connector. Use two millimeter length pieces of 1 16th inch heat shrink as strain relief. Once those are soldered, take the end of the connector you cut off and plug it into the front of the span motor. Then follow the same suit for the wires coming out of the bottom of the span mount. Once everything has been soldered, you can twist your span motor back and forth if you wish to check if everything is wired properly. After this, we will glue the span driver onto the motor. If you look down the center, you will notice there's a notch on the hole. This is how you will match it up with the driver on the motor itself. Take some super glue and put it on the inside of the bottom. Then match it up with the motor's driver and push it into place. Make sure it is coplanar with the motor and give it a few seconds to dry. When the glue has dried, turn the driver until the flat side is facing forward with the curved side facing you. This opens it for the gripper. Take the gripper and open it all the way and push the gripper onto the tool interface. This completes the tool interface sub-assembly with a gripper attachment.